All right, folks, welcome back. Uh, this is the beginning of Unit 7, Packet 2. We will be diving into um, trigonome trigonometric ratios um, fully in this unit or this part of the unit. So everything be before this that we had done um, kind of set us up for those ratios, but now you are going to experience um, with sine, cosine, and tangent, which are already ratios that have been studied for hundreds, maybe thousands of years. Um, they were used to build the pyramids. They were used to, like, in ancient Greece to, like, build things, measure things, etc. I wish I could give you more of a poetic answer than just things. But anyway, let's get started. So what is trigonometry? Very simply put, it is the study of triangle measurement. We are going to start the study of triangle measurement with 90 degree triangles because they are the easiest to work with and they have the most common patterns that we're going to see. So there are three major trigonometric ratios. Each acute angle of a right triangle has the following trigonometric ratios. Sine, the ratio of the leg opposite the angle to the hypotenuse. So for this one, you're gonna to wanna to have colors here. So these are the examples. Um, so for example, oops, that's not a highlighter. It says sine A, right? So I'm going to find angle A and follow the rule here. The ratio of the leg opposite the angle, so the opposite is A, um, to the hypotenuse. So this ratio is going to be side A over the hypotenuse, which we know stands for C. Okay, uh, well, based off of Pythagorean theorem. Next, we have um, us testing out sine B. So let's do that in purple. Sine B, I'm going to go ahead and find angle B, and I'm going to see that its opposite is side B, which will be over the hypotenuse, which is C. Okay, notice that both of these are over C, the hypotenuse. Next major trigonometric function we have is cosine. Uh, cosine's rule is the ratio of the leg adjacent to the angle of the hypotenuse. Please remember that adjacent means next to and touching. Okay, so let's again break this down really quickly. So cosine A, again I'm going to find angle A because that's that capital A I'm looking for. The rule this time is the ratio of the leg adjacent, the leg adjacent, so it can't be C, it has to be this B, and the angle to the hypotenuse, so C. This is going to be side B over C. Okay, next we have cosine, oh, let's do orange, B again, um, and then B is down here, so the opposite, I'm sorry, the um, adjacent leg, which is A, over the hypotenuse, which is C. Now, if you take a look back here, you'll notice that um, between sine and cosine, C is always going to be in the denominator, all right? And then last but not least, we have tangent. So tan of A, let's get rid of that tan of A, uh, the rule is the ratio of the leg opposite the angle, opposite A, to the leg adjacent to the angle, which is B. So this is going to be A over B. And then our last one here is tan B. Oops, not a highlighter. Tan B. So again, same rule except just a different location. We have the ratio of the leg opposite and over the adjacent, so B over A. Now that might seem very intimidating, a lot of what I just threw at you, but um, there's a very, very simple acronym here that we can use, and it's called SOHTOA. Okay? Now, SO, S-O-H, stands for the S stands for sine, of course, and the OH will stand for opposite over hypotenuse. For K, the C obviously stands for cosine, and the AH is adjacent over hypotenuse. 
And then T, TOA, stands for tan, which is opposite over adjacent. Okay, again, this might have clarified some things. It might not have. I think the practice is really where we're going to shine on this. So let's look at number one. Okay. The directions say give each trigonometric ratio as a function in simplest form. Now, I want it as if so. It's going to be a fraction. You're going to have to make that fraction into its simplest form. The first one they want us to look at is sine A. So I'm going to go ahead and locate angle A because they see that capital A here to find that capital A. And because they're telling me I have to use sine, I'm going to go ahead and use the so, S-O-H, which means it's going to have to be opposite. So 5 is opposite. 5 over the hypotenuse, which is 13. And that's it. That's my ratio. That tells me that the angle sine A, and by the way, this isn't the sine A refers to the angle part, has the ratio of 5 over 3. Okay? All right, um, next one. Let's see. We have cosine A. Okay, let me erase all of this. So cosine A, we're going to go again, look at A. But this time, it's not a sine ratio. We want the cosine ratio, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent meaning, of course, next to and touching. Remember, it's the leg, though. You don't want the hypotenuse. So this is going to be 12 over the hypotenuse, which is 13. Okay? Cool. The ratio part, guys, is really, really easy. Um, I wish that we could, like, dive deeper into what sine, cosine, and tan actually mean and where they were derived for. But unfortunately, that's more of, like, an in-person, whole group kind of deal. And there are some really cool videos on YouTube. You can check that out if, you're, if you want to seek out that knowledge. Okay, going back to the problem. Again, we haven't left angle A, but we're, we're discovering the different types of trigonometric ratios attached to A. So A, again, here, but this time we are testing it for tan, which means we're going to look for its opposite, which is 5, over the adjacent leg, which is 12. Okay? All right, so I want you to go ahead and give um, the sine, cosine, and tan of C a try. And I'm going to go ahead and put the answers here just so you can check as you go along. Or you can pause and, you know, come back. And that's it. That's all you need to do. Um, the beginning of this lesson, obviously, they want you to practice how to create these ratios. Now, let's look at number two. You'll notice that before we even start this, I don't want to jump right into my sine, cosine, and tan. I want to go ahead and look at my triangle first. Notice that I'm missing this um, side, that hypotenuse wx well lucky for me this happens to be a 90 degree triangle so that means i can actually solve for that missing side pretty easily using pythagorean theorem so 9 squared plus 12 squared equals c squared 225 equals c squared um square root that square root that and 15 equals c so this side is going to be 15. They just put that added little step there. Okay, so I'll do a few of these and just randomly and then you guys will finish in the rest. So I'm going to start with the first one, sine of W. So W is right here. Sine I know is so, right? Opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite is 12 over the hypotenuse, which is 15. But remember the direction said I want it in its most reduced form. So in order to do that, well, I happen to know that the GCF is 3. So I would divide the top and bottom by 3. Or you can go into your calculator. Some of you know this trick. You're going to go put 12 divided by 15 in your calculator. Um, then click the button that says math on the left side under the green button. And the first option there says fraction. You're going to press enter, enter and it's gonna give you the reduced fraction of four over five, okay? 
All right, let's go ahead and do two more on this problem. Uh, let's do cosine x. So x is here, right? Cosine I know is k, c-a-h. That means adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's going to be 12. Sorry, I erased this one. That is going to be 12 over 15. And that would reduce to also 4 over 5. Notice that these two have the same ratio, but they're not written the same. And that's okay. That's completely fine. All right. And then the last one we'll do is tan of W. Let's get rid of these. And I'm going to go ahead and look at W. Tan, remember, is TOA. Oops, not a pen. T-O-A. So I'm looking for opposite over adjacent, which will be 12 over 9. And again, to reduce this, this would become 4 over 3. I do want the reduced fraction as many times as you can give me. Okay, so um, go ahead and fill in the rest of those. I'm sure you guys are capable of doing that at this point. If not, just come and see me. We'll do some practice one-on-one. -on -one. Um, 13 starts off the same way as 2, except this time the missing side happens to be a leg, right? So use your Pythagorean theorem correctly. This is going to be C because it's opposite 34. Let's say this is A, this would be B. You can go ahead and solve for that missing side and then go ahead and do your um, ratios. Okay, moving on to the next page. Um, it's mostly just practice, but we are going to practice getting, um, actually putting our trigonometric ratios into the calculator now. So if I look at number four, well, first let's read the directions. It says, solve for X round to the nearest tenth. Okay, actually I'm gonna do five. Um, so in this case, you might be like, oh, wait, 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 hold on. I don't have all the information. I don't have all the sides. What is this? Well, that's okay because the angle you're concerned with is right here. This is 41, right? So let's say that this is angle 41 is right here. The only information you have is opposite and adjacent, right? So opposite and adjacent. That means you have to look at one of your trigonometric functions and say, which one has opposite and adjacent in the same fraction? There's opposite, but that's not adjacent. That's adjacent, but that's not opposite. Oh, here we go. Opposite and adjacent, which means we're going to have to do tan. So TOA is going to be what we use here. And we're going to put, instead of sine A, B, C, or D, this is going to be uh, tan 41 because this is where we're working from. That's our control station. Tan 41 equals opposite, which is x, over 32. Okay? Now, this might look intimidating, but it's actually really not. This is just algebra at this point. If you can construct this, you've done the geometry. If you can solve it, you're doing algebra. Before we move on to that, though, I want to make sure that all your calculators are in a, a specific mode. So, you need to be in degree mode. Um, double check that you are. You're going to go into your calculator. You're going to go to this button that says mode here. And then I will bring you to this screen. Um, you have to make sure that this degree is the one that is being highlighted and kind of flashing. If it's on radian, then all you need to do is just click the right button once you go down and click right and make sure that that is on degree and then just press enter or clear or cancel once that's done. Okay, because now we're going to actually use the tan function. So on your calculator, and I'm sorry I don't actually have like a split screen where I can do this, um, the tan buttons are located pretty much in the middle of your, of your calculator. So you're going to click tan 41. And sorry, this is cross multiplication. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. Tan 41 times 32, because we are cross multiplying, equals... X. So tan 31, sorry, tan 41 in parentheses times 32 is going to be 27.8 equals X. And that's approximately because I did round. And that's it. That's basically telling me that the value of this X is about 27.8 whatever, right? That's the length of it. And that's it. Um, let's do a few more here. I'm going to go ahead... 
randomly choose something. Let's do, let's do eight. Okay. So for this one, again, I have to figure out, am I going to be doing a sine? Excuse me, cosine or tan, right? Well, I'm moving from 33. This is where my operation starts. So 33, I have an opposite and I have a hypotenuse. So opposite over hypotenuse. Oh, there it is, sine. So we're going to be doing sine of 33 equals 15 over x. Same thing here, you're going to cross multiply and we are going to get sine of 33 oh no, sorry. times x equals 15. Okay, now you might be saying, um, this looks weird because now the x is not on the same, on the other side. That's okay. Like I said before, the sine 33 is a number. Like this, this value here is actually a number, but we've come to that point in math where numbers take on many shapes and forms, right? So basically in order to get x by itself, in order to isolate x, I have to div divide both sides by sine 33. So that's what I'm going to do. And in your calculator, you're going to go 15 divided by, click your sign button, 33, and press enter. X is going to be approximately 27.5. Okay. And that's really all that is to it. Um, I'm not going to do another example of those because I'd like to get to one of these word problems. And then there's a few more problems that are in the next page that I want to get to. And I know this video is long, I'm sorry, but I think I have to come to peace that they might end up being a bit longer just so that you get the information. So number 10 reads to us, Jake leaned a 12 foot ladder against his house. If the angle formed by the ladder and the ground is 68 degrees, how far from the base of the house did he place the ladder? You have to, you must, you absolutely must draw these out. You have to. You will not get, get, get that. You will not get credit if you don't, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and draw myself a little oblong house here. It's like a Rapunzel's house or whatever. Um, Jake leaned a 12-foot ladder against this house. So this is the ladder, okay? If the angle formed by the ladder and the ground, so ladder and the ground is 68 degrees, how far, oh, I'm sorry, this is also 12 feet, um, how far from the base of the house did he place the ladder? So I want to know the distance here, I don't know, from the base of the house to where he placed the ladder is what I'm trying to figure out, okay? So in order to do this, and keep in mind, um, the house should be a straight house going up and down. That means this should be a 90 degree angle, which means we can use our trigonometric functions. So I'm going to see what I have to work with. Um, well, here's my control center, and I'm either going to be doing so, ka, or toa, and I happen to have the adjacent leg and the hypotenuse, so which means I'm going to be using cosine. So cosine of 68 degrees equals x over 12. I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply. Cosine 68 times 12 equals x. Put that in your calculator. Cosine 68 times 12. And x is approximately 4.5 feet. Please make sure you put the unit measurement. Um, and that makes sense. 4.5 is valid. If you were to get like 20 or 30 feet, you know you've done something wrong because the hypotenuse has to be the longest side. All right, then I'm sure you guys can go ahead and create 13 as a drawing and then solve it. Notice there's just like, like little to no work, right? But the conceptualizing of the drawing is really, really important. All right, um, I am going to more or less skip over this page. It's just practice. Um, and then I wanted to do these three last problems because they are composite and word problems. 
and worth doing together. Okay, so looking at number 12, you notice that we have two triangles placed here, right? If you're guessing, oh, does that mean I have to do two equations? Yeah, probably. Um, so I'm going to highlight each one separately. So this pink triangle I'm going to work on separately, and this blue triangle I will work on separately. Now, figuring out which one to work on first is your absolute first step. Um, I am drawn to working on this triangle on the left because I actually have more information to work with. So if I want to know what this length is, I'm just going to call it x, right? I now have my control center of 54, and I'm going to figure out, well, which one of these, so ka or toa, am I going to use? I have opposite, and I have hypotenuse, so opposite and hypotenuse. So what I'm going to do is create my equation, sine 54 equals x over 20. <laughs> Cross multiply, I get sine 54 times 20 equals x. <laughs> In this case, I don't have to divide by anything fancy. All I need to do is multiply it out. And x is going to be approximately 16.2. Please only round to the 10th place when necessary. Excuse me. So that means that this, oops, that this length is 16.2. Okay. Now I can go ahead and focus in on doing the blue triangle. Um, because I'm looking for, I'm sorry, I didn't even read the problem. I'm looking for DC. I'm looking for this length, right? Um, that's good because now I have my control center here at 28 degrees. I have opposite and I'm trying to find my adjacent. So opposite over adjacent is TOA, tan. So I'm going to do tan of 28 degrees equals opposite 16.2 over adjacent, which is Y. Okay, then cross multiply. So in this case, I will have to do a little bit of algebra. Tan 28 times Y equals 16.2. In order to isolate Y, I am going to divide both sides by the value tan 28. And again, I recognize that letters and things that look like words in math are not our forte. We have to get comfortable with it. So I'm going to put 16.2 divided by tan 28, and that should be approximately 30.5 if I round it up correctly. Okay, and that's it. That's all they're asking for. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and skip 13 and let's just do 14 and end the video there. Um, of course, I'm here to support you as you need during class or if you watch this at home, come see me after. All right, so 14 reads, a wire is attached from the top of a 30 foot tall telephone pole to a stake in the ground. If the angle formed by the wire and the pole is 48 degrees, what is the length of the wire? Now, notice that the first time I read this, I do not start drawing. I read it once, just nothing, just want to read the problem. Then I'm going to go back and now I'm going to draw the, the problem what they're telling me to do. A wire is attached from the top of a 30 foot tall telephone pole. Okay, so here's my telephone pole. Uh, I believe they look like that. So a wire is attached from the top of a 30 foot telephone pole to a stake on the ground. So this stake on the ground, this is my wire, okay? Um, and also this is 30 feet off the ground, this pole. I'm actually gonna erase these little things because I don't wanna confuse myself, okay? Um, a wire is attached, 30 foot, da, da, da. if the angle formed by the wire and the pole, so right here, is 48 degrees, what is the length of the wire? So I am trying to figure out this portion here, and I'll call it x. I want to know the length of the wire. And now I can even just go ahead and connect this so I know it's a triangle. And I know it's 90 degrees because poles are usually placed perpendicular to the ground. Okay, so let's see the information I have. I have 48, this is my control center, and I have adjacent, ooh, why did that happen? 
I have adjacent, which is my 30, and I have my hypotenuse, which is x. So between so ka toa, adjacent and hypotenuse is cosine. So I'm going to start this off. Cosine 48 equals adjacent 30 over hypotenuse, which is x. Okay? Cross multiply this, I get cosine 48 times x equals 30. Algebra, algebra, get rid of cosine 48 on both sides. And x is approximately 44.8 feet. And that is all. Okay? So, um, Please make sure that you're uh, trying your best with this. Uh, the math's not difficult. The calculator does the heavy lifting here. The conceptual um, understanding that you guys need to get is the ratios. Um, most people with practice just end up memorizing the Soka Toa kind of deal. And I need you to know that because there's going to be three extra trigonometric functions that we are going to explore moving forward. All right, that's it for me. Um, go ahead and do as much as you can in the next video is going to be finding angle measures using trig. This is just the opposite stuff. It shouldn't be too long. Okay, thanks. Bye.